Hello, Peter. Pleased to report that uh, have your brake booster finished and tested, and we are ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to go over a few things first. Uh, all new goodies. Got the new can. Uh, yours was pitted, and uh, it's a good idea to get the new can. I'm glad you did that. Uh, new vacuum hose here. Your um, uh, air filter assembly poppet has been uh, remanufactured with um, a new Teflon and um, uh, parts in there. Uh, the slave cylinder was in good shape, got it honed, it's ready to go. We got all new uh, uh, hydraulic parts in here, a new uh, vacuum diaphragm inside here, uh, so we are ready to go. Uh, a few odds and ends here, let's see. Uh, this is a, a plug here for travel purposes and for testing purposes. You may have your brake light switch going there, uh, or it. Um, I think that's where your brake light switch goes. Anyway. When you're screwing in your brake light switch, uh, it's got tapered threads, and uh, these are straight threads. So what you want to do is screw in the brake light switch until uh, you don't have any leakage. You don't have to uh, screw the brake light switch in all the way and bottom out or anything like that because the um, brake light switch threads are tapered. Also, you notice you've got f uh, flats right here, and uh, what uh, this is, uh, what you do is you want to put a wrench on here while you do the final uh, tightening on your fitting right uh, here for the brake lines because this jam nut holds the uh, slave cylinder in position but it's not really designed to overcome some uh, heavy duty torquing down here with a um, uh, uh, 17 or 19 millimeter wrench so, so you, you it, so in order to keep the slave cylinder from shifting uh, hold on here with some pliers uh, or a um, crescent wrench now then, in terms of uh, testing, I'm using DOT3 brake fluid, which is what these things are designed for. And uh, what we've got going on here is a vacuum. These two gauges are uh, going to read the vacuum as supplied by the pump on my test machine. And then as the booster is activated, this gauge is going to go to zero. And when the booster is fully activated, it uh, is when it hits zero. At the same time, this gauge is going to stay constant and that uh, and if it, if it uh, wavers or goes down and it means we got a vacuum leak inside the booster and so you want to make sure this one stays steady over here we've got the hydraulic side uh, this is the input as uh, supplied by the master cylinder on the test machine and these two these two gauges are tied together this gauge goes up maxes out this gauge goes up and reads final output pressure as uh, I'm sorry input pressure uh, as supplied by the um, um, master cylinder on the machine output again these two gauges are tied together this gauge re uh, goes up maxes out and this is going to read final output pressure as supplied by the booster with when it has vacuum now without vacuum uh, the input uh, and the output are the same I'll show you that right now the, the, without vacuum, the booster is inert and it just uh, processes uh, just brake fluid in, brake fluid out. Nothing, nothing changes. So you can see we got 350, 350, 350. Now then, since this booster is a beastly 3.7 to 1 uh, boost ratio, we're going to see a lot of output here. So 350 here and 3.7 times that, we're going to have going to be at least in the 12, 1300 range of um, output pressure. So there we go.
the same time we are under pressure, we look for leaks from uh, the uh, under the jam nut. There's a seal down inside here that uh, potentially can leak. And we check our bleed screws, make sure they're holding pressure. And everything's good. Got you a good booster. Uh, let's see, this bleed screw is not really necessary to use. Don't worry about it. So what you want to do is bleed here first, then go to your left rear, right, let's see, right rear, left rear, right front, left front, and then bleed the booster last. And uh, you may need to make two uh, or three laps around the car to get all the air out. Uh, these cars can be difficult to, to bleed. And other than that, I think, oh, yes, also, uh, this is a, a test port right here that you can use if you, uh, are in the mood, you just pull the um, uh, cap screw out of there, put a vacuum gauge to it, and um, this get vacuum gauge, uh, or that port is tied to this hose, which goes up to this gauge, and so what you'll do is you'll put your vacuum gauge in there, apply the brakes, and see the um, gauge move, so that you know your brakes are uh, working. It's not necessary, but just fun to do sometimes. If you have any questions, I'll be available, but thank you very much for letting me take care of your booster for you.